Last weekend in China's northwestern Xinjiang province, police shot and killed 14 people during a riot near the city of Kashgar. Two policemen were also killed. According to the Chinese government, the police were attacked by a terror gang indirectly blaming Islamist militants. What police in Xinjiang broke up was a violent terror gang. This gang used explosive devices to attack law enforcement officials. It once again showed the true face of violent terrorists who oppose the government and humankind. It should be condemned by all people who love peace and stability. Authorities in the region have stepped up security measures in Xinjiang after a car crashed into Beijing's Tiananmen Square in October, killing the three people in the car and two tourists. The government blamed a Uyghur militant group for the attacks and has used the threat of terrorism as a means to justify harsher crackdowns in Xinjiang province. Xinjiang is home to the Turkic-speaking Uyghur ethnic group who claim they're persecuted by China's Han majority. We're joined via Skype now by Alim Saitoff of the World Uyghur Congress. It advocates nonviolent and peaceful efforts towards self-determination in East Turkestan, what China calls Xinjiang. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Now, what is your version of what happened last Sunday? Uh, according to our information, uh, Chinese security forces broke into a house uh, of a Uyghur family uh, who had at the time invited other extended family members to uh, make preparations for an upcoming wedding for one of their children. Uh, at the time, Chinese security forces broke in and also harassed the family members because that was a large gathering. And uh, after July 5th of 2009 unrest, uh, the Chinese authorities in East Turkestan tried to prevent any kind of Uyghur gatherings, fearing that they would conspire against the uh, uh, Chinese rule in the region. But as a result, uh, the security forces began to harass the family members and uh, even uh, touch the women and unveil the, uh, the women's veil. Then as a result, a clash ensued. Uh, Chinese security forces used force as usual, fired and killed uh, at least 14 Uyghur uh, people inside of the house. Uh, six of them were women, two of them were teenagers. And uh, so that's what transpired last Sunday. The account you just gave us is very different from what the Chinese government is putting out there. How do you reconcile that? Yes, uh, usually what happens in East Turkestan is the Chinese government's current policy seems to be shoot and kill and spin another story on whatever happens. As we have witnessed since April of this year, there have been many uh, alleged violent instances have taken place. In each case, you can clearly see the Chinese uh, security forces break into the house of a Uyghur, shoot and kill, blame them as either terrorists or extremists. Uh, in many cases, a lot of uh, young people were killed, uh, family members were killed, a lot of houses were basically attacked by the Chinese security forces. The story has always been the same. It is the Chinese security forces uh, killed the Uyghur alleged terrorists. Then they claim knives or alleged homemade bombs were found. But uh, also at the same time, the Chinese government has never allowed uh, foreign journalists to come uh, to investigate, foreign diplomats to come and visit to really see what was happening, and basically shielded any kind of international investigation in order to justify the heavy-handed crackdown and spin, spin their own version of the events. Alim, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Alim Seitoff speaks for the World Uyghur Congress. It's based in Germany. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.